reducing health disparities. Poverty effects on the health, healthy food access. A huge part of this is the failure of access to have healthy options. 2013 marked the first time in 10 years that a grocery store was open. Even now, these good options are far away, making access hard. In addition, studies have proven that children of adults who have bad diet choices are more likely to continue the cycle. Linking back to the distance portion, fast food is way closer, quicker, and is cheaper. Buying healthy foods is so expensive. Most people in poverty high areas do not have the, also do not have the basic training on the importance of eating healthy. And, oh wait, sorry. According to the U.S. News, the DMC in Detroit is below average in almost all, in all categories of care. They are unranked in Michigan for lung cancer treatment, have a 2.5 star rating for heart bypass surgery, and again, a 2.5 star rating for diabetes treatment. Overall, they have one of the worst programs in the state. They have a below average 30 day survival rate. In Michigan, 1.85 million people have diabetes. To think, they have all, to think so many people have diabetes, and yet one of the biggest hospitals in Michigan can't treat it. According to an anonymous source at the U.S. News, the staff at DMC discriminates against African Americans. They do not give equal treatment to everybody. A hospital is a place where you should feel safe and taken care of. African Americans are being deprived of this. This is especially crazy because the DMC hospital is surrounded by a predominantly black community, and yet they still face prejudice where no prejudice should ever be. Now, COVID-19 is making its way through black community at a disproportional rate. 32% of all cases reported in Michigan come from African Americans, and they only make up a small 14% of Michigan's total population. The fact that they make up such a large number of cases speaks volumes. The biggest reason for high COVID numbers is the lack of education. No one is informing these poverty, the poverty-stricken communities with real COVID facts. For them, life must go on. If people living in downtown Detroit can stop working, they face, firing, they face a firing from their job and have no income to pay their bills. For them, it's a simple decision. Educating poverty-stricken communities needs to become a priority, especially with COVID-19 numbers on the rise. Because of COVID-19 and other medical conditions, medical clinics have been swamped. These clinics are free of cost and have been seeing quadruple the number of patients they normally see, which is already such a high number. They don't have the resources nor the manpower to treat this many people. Doctors running Huda, a clinic in Detroit, want to be there. They hate to see their community hurting as much as it is right now. It is so bad on the streets that they have to prescribe food as to their patients. In Detroit, we can see a perfect example of how the lower class can't afford the basic necessity of proper health care. This is due to their extremely high insurance deductibles which are on average $214 a month. This is $78 more than the US average in other cities. And it's simply ridiculous that people have to give almost 10% of their monthly income simply to paying their deductibles. And this figure does not account for co-pays and hospital visits. Hospital visits have increased and spiked 7% from 2017 and gone from $577 to $617, according to TransUnion. Another added expense is prescription drugs. Many drugs are a necessity, like EpiPens and insulin, and they have prices that can cost more than a hospital stay. Overall, these factors are what make poverty-stricken people have no hope of having access to good, affordable health care. Luckily, there are many ways that we can improve these situations. We can require gym classes to have a lesson on dietary consciousness and prepare kids to make good choices. 
We can also offer classes for those past schooling age. The biggest solution that I think would work is to have an incentive for people to buy fresh fruits and vegetables. A person should never have to worry about racism at a hospital. This can be fixed with formal training by professionals to doctors. This would teach doctors to handle situations professionally. Another way to ensure that everything runs smoothly is there could be a floor supervisor that reports everything directly to the hospital board, ensuring that everything is in proper running condition. Lastly, in poorer, large scale, in poorer areas, large scale medical clinics can be put in action. This would ensure a higher quality of care because doctors choose to be there. They choose to work there. This would also increase overall avail availability to, of medical, medical care. As you've heard previously, the cost to get access to proper health services is astronomically high, and we need to take action to lessen this financial burden. One way this can be done is by increasing the funding allocated to welfare programs, locally and federally. This will allow people who cannot fully provide for themselves to have access to the basic human right of healthcare. Another way we can assist people is by helping them educate themselves on responsible financial choices. This could prove very beneficial and allow people to not be as affected by these health financial burdens. One final way we could help impoverished people is by creating a flexible payment plan, which allows them to pay back hospital bills in a much longer way, which makes it less burdensome in the moment and doesn't allow them to go further into poverty. This is our work cited page. Okay. Um, so here we have a um, trifold poster to illustrate some of the differences between pe wealthy people and impoverished people. Here we have a man who is very wealthy going into his local hospital, which is very well maintained and very well funded. And he's going for a stomach ache, a simple stomach ache. He leaves the hospital and drives past the school in his local area, which has much more funding than the one below. And as he's driving, he sees billboards for places with healthy food, such as Whole Foods and Trader Joe's. And down the line, five years later, we see him in the park, enjoying life to its fullest potential. Down here, we have Demarcus, who needs to go to the hospital because his arteries are clogged. However, he cannot afford the proper, the, he cannot afford the cost to get his arteries and get professional medical assistance. So instead of going to the hospital, he drives away. And as he's driving, he sees his school in his local area run down and lacking funding. Additionally, along the way, he notices a KFC and McDonald's billboard, which happened to be very troublesome and very bad for people with heart problems. And inevitably, five years later, after that McDonald's clogging up his arteries so much, he dies of a heart attack, which could have been reversed if he had proper access to the proper health care, the proper education on healthy eating, and the best quality of care he could have.